I want you to see in Hebrews chapter 11, notice uh, verse number 7, the Bible says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark, notice this, to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Noah was warned of God of things not seen as yet. To that point, it had not rained. The Bible says a mist came up out of the ground to water the ground. Genesis 6.22 tells us that. And so, for God to tell Noah that a flood of waters is coming, Noah's never seen that. He just simply has to believe God's Word. He simply has to listen to what God is saying and act accordingly. And I want you to notice his motivation. And notice this, fear is not always a bad motivation as long as your fear is founded in faith. Say, so, wait a minute, I thought those are two opposite things. No, they're not opposite things. It's very important to understand. Noah's fear was founded in faith. Look at it again, verse 7. It says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. They're not mutually exclusive. He was a man of faith, but he was moved with fear. And what did he do? He prepared an ark. And what happened when he prepared the ark? It saved his house. Uh, what is faith? Go back to Hebrews 11.1. 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Sometimes people say faith is a leap in the dark, and it's actually not that at all. Uh, many people blame, a, feel, they, they blame uh, a feeling they've had on faith. They say, well, I just got this, this intuition, this tingle up my spine. Boy, I just feel like I need to do this, and I think it's faith. That's not faith. Faith isn't a leap in the dark. Actually, faith, it's very simple what faith is. And I want you to notice verse 1, it says there's substance to faith, there's evidence of things not seen when it comes to faith. And verse 6 tells us, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I want you to consider what faith really is. I want you to think of when uh, God told Moses... The children of Israel were fleeing from Pharaoh. Pharaoh's literally marching behind them, chasing them. They have the Red Sea in front of them. They have Pharaoh coming behind them. And go study uh, the, the landscape. They were literally between a rock and a hard place. There was nowhere to go. They were closed in. They were hedged in. They have the Red Sea in front of them. And I love, I love how God says something to Moses. Moses says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Well, that sounds, that sounds reasonable. I mean, what else are you going to do? There's a rock and a hard place on each side. Pharaoh's coming behind the Red Sea's in front. Of course, we better just stand still and wait. And God said this to Moses. He said, why are you telling the people to stand still? Well, God, did you notice the big Red Sea in front of us? What did God say? He said, tell the people what? Go forward. Did you notice the Red Sea? I said, go forward. Did you notice the obstacle? I said go forward. See, when God puts an obstacle in your path, it doesn't mean it isn't His will to go forward. Amen. Sometimes it's exactly the thing God wants to use to show His power and His glory. Yeah. So, look, I had somebody one time say, Pastor, I know things are the will of God when they're easy. I'm going to tell you right now, that's just not Bible. I mean, God will put you through the storm. He'll put you through tough things so that He can get the glory and all the glory. He wants all the glory, by the way. He deserves all the credit. He deserves all the glory. So when Moses said, hey, stand still and see the salvation, the Lord said, no. You tell the, the Lord said, you tell the people, go forward. He said, take your rod, Moses, and stretch it out. And what happened? We know the Red Sea parted. By the way, young people, uh, they walked through on dry ground. It was not knee-deep water. It was not, you know, a marshy ground, as some Bible doubters say. Well, it was just knee-deep water. No, it wasn't. If it was knee-deep water, the greater miracle is that all Pharaoh's army drowned in knee-deep water. No, it was dry ground. When the Bible says dry ground, it means dry ground. They walked through on dry ground, and God gave great victory. That is an example of faith. What happened? God told Moses to do something. Moses didn't know how it was going to work out. He didn't really fully understand, okay, we're going through the Red Sea this way, but God, you said to do it, so here we go. That's faith. Uh, it, Jesus gave an example of the greatest faith he had seen. This is amazing. Jesus is the Son of God. And there was a story, there was a, a centurion, he's a soldier, and he's over a lot of other soldiers, and he had a servant 
who was sick unto death. And so he, sent, he cared for his servant. He sent another servant to Jesus and said, Hey, go tell Jesus, my servant's sick unto death. Uh, we need some help. And so they sent servants to Jesus and told him the story. Jesus hears the words and he begins to come to the centurion's house. He's going to come to the centurion's house and heal the centurion servant. Well, when the centurion hears this, that Jesus is coming to his house, he sends another servant to Jesus and said, Listen, Master, trouble not thyself. He said, You don't need to come under my house. Listen to what he said. Don't miss this. He said, You just speak the word. And I know it'll, it'll be so. Whatever you say is what's going to happen. And when he heard that, Jesus marveled. I mean, it's amazing that the Son of God marveled. He turned around and marveled. He said, I have not found so great what? So great faith. faith. No, not in Israel. What, what did the man do that was so, such a, an amazing thing that was great faith? Here it is. It's very simple. He simply believed Jesus' word. Faith is when you take a promise of God and you may not fully understand how it's going to work out. You may not fully understand every detail of it, but you know what God's Word says and you act upon it in obedience to God. That, my friend, is faith. And the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please Him. And by faith, Noah built this ark. It was obedience to God. And notice the results. It was to the saving of his house. Go to Genesis 7 if you would. And I want you to notice Genesis 7, Noah obeys the Lord, he builds this ark. And when he builds the ark, the Bible also tells us that he was a preacher of righteousness. 2 Peter 2, 5, he's a preacher of righteousness. So if I may, in so many words, Noah had a hammer in one hand and a Bible in the other. What am I saying? I'm saying while he was building the ark, he was preaching. He was preaching. Build the ark, preach the truth. Build the ark, Preach the truth. Build the ark. Preach the truth. Build the ark. Preach the truth. Man. You know, the, the neighbors walk by. I mean, just again, don't just read the Bible. Live the Bible. You know, imagine you, you live far away from water, and here's this neighbor, and he's out there building something huge. He's, hey, what are you building? A barn? No, a boat. A boat. A boat. An, an ark, actually. God spoke to me. God spoke to you. Yes, God spoke to me. He's warned me and I'm warning you. Judgment's coming. You better get on the ark. Judgment's coming. You better get on the ark. Noah, have you lost your mind? Noah, hey, you know what? Did Noah just have a feeling about this? No, he had the Word of God telling him what was coming. And notice uh, Genesis 7, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Noah built the ark and he preached. He built the ark and he preached. He built the ark and he preached. Verse 2, Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female, of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. That's faith. Verse 6, And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. How long did Noah take? Listen, there was 120 years from the time God said judgment is coming. It was decades. Noah was preaching and building, preaching and building, preaching and building, warning people. And at the end of all that time, who gets in the ark with Noah? Nobody but him and his wife and his sons and his son's wives. Nobody else. Noah, you're a failure. No, he isn't. He's obeyed God by faith. Hey, Noah, where's your crowd? Noah said, well, it's just my house. It's just my house. And let me say tonight, and I'll say many a time before the end of this message, if all you do, if all you do is save your house, then you build the ark by faith. Amen. If all you do is save your household, your family, you walk with God. If all you do is make sure your children are following God and your marriage is honoring God, Though none go with you, still you should follow. 
Noah was ostracized. Noah was mocked, no doubt, until the day came that the flood came and took them all away. Notice the Bible says, verse 11, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. It didn't just rain. Picture tsunamis and, and fountains from underground, under the ocean, just breaking up and the windows of heaven opening. The Bible says the windows of heaven were opened and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. Notice verse 15, and they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. That's faith. As God had commanded him. That's faith. He took the word of God. He obeyed it. And the Lord shut him in, and the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth, and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both the fowl and of cattle, and of beasts, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land died, and every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. Again, the Bible says that Noah moved with fear, prepared an ark. His fear stemmed from his faith. He feared because he believed what God told him. And it's okay to be motivated by fear when it's founded in faith. And what was the result? The result was the saving of his house. Millions perished. Millions perished. But his house was saved. 1 Peter 3.20 says, When once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. Number one, tonight, very quickly, the ark is a picture of salvation. Amen. That is only in Jesus Christ. It's a picture of salvation. Uh, 1 Peter 3.20, again, it says, When once, in fact, let's turn there. 1 Peter 3, verse 20 says, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few that his eight souls were saved by water, verse 21, the like figure, that's a picture is what that means, whereunto even baptism also doth also now save us. Now hold on, folks. I don't know if this is a problem down here. This is a big problem where I'm from. Water baptism does not save you. Water baptism does not wash away your sins. Listen, we're baptized by the Holy Ghost of God into the body of Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. We are baptized by the Spirit of God. But notice what this is saying. It talks about Noah and the preparing of the ark. And it's a picture, it says, verse 21, the like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us. And notice the parentheses. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not taking out of the Bible, but remember that a parenthetical statement is an interruption in a thought. So I want you to take out that parenthesis, just read around it to see what the whole thought around it was. Notice what he says. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. It's a picture, it's a figure where baptism doth also now save us by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not water baptism that saves you. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's believing the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. Believing on Him for your salvation that saves you. Now listen though, the story of Noah is a picture. Did the water save Noah? No, not at all. It was the ark. The ark God told him to build that saved Noah. It was what God commanded by faith Noah to do. And what I'm telling you folks is there's only one way to heaven. That's through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one thing you can depend on, and that's Jesus Himself. John 3, 14 through 16, Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Remember the story of Moses and the serpent. What happened? The serpents were biting the children of Israel, and they were dying, and 
Moses and Aaron went to God said, What do we do? He said, Take a brazen serpent, put it on a pole. And whosoever does what shall live. What did he say? Look. It's simple. And Jesus said, In the same way, I'm going to be lifted up on an old rugged cross. So that's too simple. That's God's plan. It's so simple. He did the hard part. He did the work. We must look to His solution for salvation. Amen. Philippians 3, 9, Paul said, I want to be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. You know, because that's the only thing we could do. We, we couldn't live a, a good enough life to impress a holy God. The Bible says, Whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. But what we can do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Uh, listen, go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And notice the picture here, Matthew 24, verse 37. Again, salvation is not something we earn, deserve. It's not something we can work for. It's a free gift of God through Jesus Christ. And the ark is a picture. If people believed God's word, what would they do? Get in the ark. Those who did believe God's word, they got in the ark. Those who didn't believe God's word, they may have even thought, well, okay, judgment's coming, but, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll go to a high ground. We'll find another way of salvation. Folks, there is no other way but Jesus Christ, God's way. Matthew 24, notice verse 37. The Bible says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. And, and I, I know you know this. The coming of the Son of Man, that's what people have referred to as the rapture. Meeting Christ in the air when He comes in the air for His people. Notice, then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not... The Son of Man cometh. The ark is a picture of salvation that is only in Jesus Christ. In Acts 16, 31, they said, What must I do to be saved? The Philippian jailer, jailer asked, and what was the answer? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And what's the rest of that verse? What does it say? And thy house. And thy house. Yeah. Was he talking about the building, the house? Nope. Was he talking about the household, the family? Yeah. He's talking about the family. He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So number one, the ark is a picture of salvation that is only in Jesus Christ. And by the way, isn't that a wonderful thing just to rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ? But number two, and last of all, but don't get excited, longest of all, the ark is a picture of safety in a God-fearing, Christ-centered place. Whether it be a home or whether it be a church. The ark is a picture of safety in a God-fearing, Christ-centered place. Um, hey, parents, notice Noah was moved with fear and he built the ark. Did anybody else join him? No, but what did he do in so doing? He saved his own house. Millions of others perished, but Noah by faith saved his own house. He built and he preached and he built and he preached, and he worked, and he preached, and nobody else listened. But his house did. His house did. And by the way, at the end of it all, li listen, at the end of it all, he only saved his own family. But wait a minute. By saving his own family, don't miss this tonight. By saving his own family, he preserved the entire human race. You see, by making his family a priority and making sure they were on the ark, that actually is one of the reasons we're sitting here tonight. That's right. you, you know, you may get discouraged by saying, well, we go soul winning and, and a lot of the world doesn't want to listen to it. You're right. But you know what you make sure? You make sure you build an ark for your house. You make sure you have a godly place, a godly home, a godly marriage. Couples, you stay committed to one another. Couples, you maintain your marriage. Couples, you draw closer to Christ and closer to one another. You build an ark, if only to save your own home. 
I mean, you stay faithful in church. You stay in the Word of God in your own home. Let your children know what it is to hear you pray and call out to God. Let your children know what it is to see you win, uh, win souls and tell others about Christ. Let your children know what it is to be a sacrificial giver. Let your children know what it is to watch parents who are living lives of holiness and sanctification. Let your children know what it is to have parents who love good, godly music and who hate the corruption in the world. You build a house. You build a Christ-centered home. Hey, this church, I already know. I thank God for your church. You know what? If no other church out there does what you do, you build a church here for, to save your house. You build a church here to be Christ-honoring and Christ-glorifying. I'm sure you've not had these problems. I hope you don't. You might one day. But one day you might have somebody come in and say, Pastor Fannin... You know, if we just get away from the old traditional hymns. Pastor Fan, if we just get the electric guitars up here and the drum set. <laughs> preach, bro. I'm a preacher. Here we go. <laughs> Call them out. Pastor Fan, if we just let any kind of Bible in here, we could draw a crowd. Come on. Could draw a crowd. Hey, you know, the Pope had 80,000 in Denver years ago. Is that success? No, it isn't. Sad. See, here, here's what I'm saying, folks. You stay faithful to the Lord. You stay faithful. You look to the Word of God and say, God, what do you want in our church? Lord, hey, what pleases you? God, we're not putting out a survey in the society saying, hey, what makes society happy? What we're going to do instead is go to your Word and live our lives for an audience of one. And God, whatever makes you happy, that's what we're going to do. And by the way, if at the end of that you only save your own house, you build that ark by faith. Hey, if at the end of the day it's just your family serving God. Now I know it's not. There are many families here. You have, but you have to have this mindset. You have to have the mindset that if there's no other family who's going to stand for Christ, we will. If there's no other family that's going to stay true to the Word of God, we will. If there's no other family that's going to live a holy, godly, separated life, we will. Why? Because it very well may be that just by saving your own house, you may preserve many more millions alive. You know, your first ministry is where? It's your home. That's your first ministry. Uh, spouses, your first ministry is to one another, to those children God has entrusted to you. Yo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. The ark's a picture of safety in a God-fearing, Christ-centered home and church. What did Joshua say? Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my house, what did he say? We will serve the Lord. Uh, what, did what did God say about Abraham? He said, I know him. What did he know about Abraham? That he will command his children after him. That they will do the word of God. They, they will do the will of God. I have decided to follow Jesus. Though none go with me, still I will follow Parents, your children don't need... Listen, the, the further this thing gets down the line, the more you stand for the Word of God, the more strange, or the Bible word, peculiar, you're going to look to the world. And you know what, parents? Your children, it's okay for them to be peculiar to the world. Your children don't need to be popular with man. They need to be blessed by God. Parents, build the ark. Parents, have a home that's godly and honoring to the Lord. Church family, have a church that's honoring the Lord. Children, don't try to get out of the ark. Young people, children, help your parents build the ark. Do you think Noah's sons helped him build the ark? I guarantee they did. I guarantee they did. Hey, your parents want to have a good, godly influence in your home. You help them. Boy, I, I'm rejoiced. See all those young people up here playing music and singing and serving God. That's awesome. Young people, you always keep that heart for God. Obey your parents. Obey God. Help your parents build the ark. Parents, help your children build the ark of safety. Spouses, encourage one another to live in obedience to the Lord. Hebrews eleven seven. 7, again, what did he say? He said, by faith. What's faith? Very simply, it's knowing what God's Word says and obeying Him. That's it. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness 
which is by faith. The ark is a picture of salvation through Jesus, but it's a picture of safety in a God-fearing, Christ-centered place. You build that ark. Nobody else does. You do it. Let's bow our heads together, please. By building that ark of safety in your own home, by doing that which pleases God no matter what the culture does, it very well may, may be that you'll just save many other millions alive. But don't ever neglect the ministry of home. Spouses, maybe you need a revival in your love for one another. You know, the Bible tells husbands, husbands love your wives, be not bitter against them. It says uh, that we are to understand that we are heirs together, the grace of life, that our prayers be not hindered. Your relationship with your spouse affects your relationship with God. Children, there's no way around it. Ephesians 6 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first command with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Children, obey your parents, honor your parents. Realize your first ministry is at home. You know, it'd be, it'd be a sad thing to reach many other families, but not to reach your own. Noah first reached his own family. By the way, I wonder, uh, child of God, I want you to think of your extended family. Do you know if they're saved? Do you know if they're saved? If you don't know, why don't you know? I want to encourage you to start a checklist. and Go one by one by one down that checklist and do what you can to give them the gospel, to lead them to Jesus Christ. You build the ark. You save your own house. If no other house, you save your own. In so doing, you'll save many others. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Who would say to the Lord just by way of uplifted hand, Dear Lord, I want to understand, I do understand that my home is my first ministry. My home is my first priority. And no matter what the rest of the world does, if it's just me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If it's just me and my house, we will build the ark. If it's just me and my house, we'll listen to God and obey Him no matter what the rest of the culture does. If that's you, would you lift your hand to the Lord tonight? Would you commit that to Him again? Lord, thank You for Your Word. Bless it to our hearts. Help us to understand the importance, Lord, the importance of building that place of safety in a church, building that place of safety in the home. Lord, I pray that we'll be honoring to You that we'll live by faith, no matter what our culture does. Our heads still bowed, eyes are still closed. Is there anyone here tonight you'd say, Pastor, I'm not even sure that I'm saved. If I were to die tonight, I don't know for sure that I'd go to heaven. I'm not 100% sure. Please pray for me. If that's you, would you lift your hand tonight? Anybody at all? Heads are still bowed, eyes are still closed. If you are saved, would you just lift your hand and thank the Lord again for saving you? Just thank Him. Just thank Him. And Christian, again, I want to encourage you. You build the ark. You do what's right. You obey the Lord. Yes, you keep being a soul winner. You keep being a soul winner. You keep doing right. But families, make sure you have a family honoring to God. Individuals, put a circle around yourself and ask yourself, is this person right with the Lord? Save your own house. Lord, thank you again for your word. Help us to remember what we've heard tonight. That we make our homes a priority. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.